The Last Voyage of the Demeter. It's a new movie based on the Dracula lore on Bram Stoker's Dracula, the first, I believe, chapter of that big novel. And 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 so it really treats the Dracula character in, in a way that we probably have not seen in the mainstream before. Um, looking at it, uh, the trailers alone, like what did you think about this movie? And, and were you looking forward to it at all? So I really wanted to go see this movie, but I got pretty sick at the end of last week and I did not make it. Um, and I had to cancel my ticket. I loved the original Dracula. I read the novel, I don't know, when I was like a sophomore in high school. Like I was a big English literature junkie. I've read like most of the classics. Dracula Mm -hmm. is one of the paramount classics. It's such a good book. It is creepy it's enthralling but in a way you get to like actually sort of understand this monster that is dracula and he is truly like a 3d character like there's like he's there's more to it than just killing people exactly like he is truly sinister to like his core he truly enjoy it's like yeah he's a crazy monster serial killer yeah yeah. And, and you know what? That's the one element of this movie that I really like because they didn't... I mean, okay, so the movie starts off a little slow. Well, okay, hold on. Hold on. One second. So yeah. my question is, have yeah. you read the book? How close was the movie to the book? I have not read the book. So I wouldn't okay. be able to tell you how cl- accurate it is so in, I need to go with regard to the book. But I will probably now watch... Because because the thing is, it's not based on the entire book. This particular yeah. movie is only based on the very first, I think, it's chapter a very long of the book. book. So, right. So, I mean, I, I don't think it will hurt for me. I mean, I can yeah. probably spare enough time to go read at least the part this movie covers. But, like, just having watched the movie, I will say the first, like, 10, 15 minutes of it are pretty slow in terms of how it gets going. Mm-hmm. They do kind of, like, start laying the breadcrumbs pretty early in terms of, like, the sphere of this character, which at the beginning is just more like like this nebulous thing that people are scared of you don't really get the hint that this is dracula per se if you were to watch this movie and you didn't know a single thing about dracula you could walk away from this movie not really realizing that you just watched a dracula movie because Mm -hmm. the common perception of what dracula is particularly if you watch something like renfield earlier this year this is nothing like that so you would have walked away thinking oh wait that was a dracula movie no you would until the credits where they'd say based on bram stoker's dracula or like so so there's definitely like a slow build-up it's methodical. It's done well. I like the actors. They, you know, with David Dasmachian. I've always struggled with his last name. Like, but he was in the Suicide Squad. He's been in the MCU. I think in the Ant Man movies. Um, he's playing the one of the. He's playing like the first mate on the ship. Um, I think the captain of the ship is played like the captain in the Titanic, like James Cameron's Titanic, because he looked very familiar. Um, and then of course you have uh, Corey Hawkins. Who was in uh, the Godzilla? Who was in the the Kong movie mm-hmm. with with Sam Jackson and Brie Larson and Tom Hiddleston? He was in that movie. He was in the new iteration of Twenty Four, which got canceled by after one season. So he's had a bit of a, a hard, yeah. like tough time getting into a franchise. Like, but but he was basically at the, the lead in this movie, even though mm-hmm. it was like a ensemble cast. But Corey Hawkins' character kind of ends up being the lead of the film. Ultimately, though, my my experience with the movie was pretty good because once it picks up it does a pretty good job of stringing you along and you get a very classic monster movie where again, this serial killer identity of, of this version of Dracula, you see the character kind of, you know, pick off each of the the people on the ship on their journey across the, uh, across not the Atlantic, but they're going from like, I think like the Mediterranean, not the Mediterranean, they're going from like the black sea towards the, towards Britain. Like that's the whole story. Mm -hmm. Like I think it's from Romania or something, somewhere like that. And you really they, this movie is one of those movies where they never break the illusion for you like the the suspension of disbelief is very easy to keep up with if you can stick with the movie in the first few minutes because the movie takes itself seriously there's no like uh self um effacing or whatever like i forget the exact term but like there's no jokes made about like oh isn't this crazy like of all the things that we're doing in the world like we've got a monster that lives forever like nobody makes any kind of joke like that there's no none of that in this movie it it's the kind of movie that you can fully immerse yourself into and experience a classic monster movie and i really enjoyed having that experience because i haven't had that experience uh, recently because most horror movies nowadays rely on jump scares they and stuff all, like that yeah, they all this do. movie has a lot of psychological horror terror in there 
but there's definitely some jump scares and the set pieces are great like it's all based on the ship the demeter mm -hmm. yeah so it's really fun to just watch these characters because i love movie whether it's space based sci-fi mm -hmm. where people are stuck on a ship or whether they're stuck on the ocean or anytime there's a group, group of people stuck in one location and they're having to deal with a problem you can either write that really well or you can bore the heck out of your audience and yeah. this movie i think does a pretty good job of keeping you know people engaged i will say though it, it kind of flopped at the box office so i don't know so i saw i saw a deadline article that was talking about how they knew when barbie did as well as it did and it's continued to do as well as it has that it was going yeah. to flop and they just had to let it go and take the l which is right crazy but also i feel like so many movies with the strike right now are literally like in between what is the greater evil here do we just let it flop or do we lose even more money trying to push it back like right this is i mean and this movie, movie that they were just like no we just got to take the loss it's it's unfortunate because it made like six seven million and i mean that's probably not terrible. near yeah that's never never going to be enough for it to i mean Maybe it has legs, but I mean, if six, seven million is your starting mark, then I just don't know how far you're going to get. Um, and it's a movie that definitely has like the creature effects with, with the, the Dracula character alone are probably where a lot of the expense comes from. But it, it's, it's, it's a very well, visually very well made movie. Um, like I said, it, I do have questions about the billboard because when I saw the yeah. billboard, uh, the ad is weird. Like the, the trailer photo, what is that called? Because I, I don't know if I actually saw any actual billboards. You know what I'm talking about? Like um, like the marketing graphics that they use? Like the well, posters and like those kind yeah, of things? Yeah. Oh. He, Dracula looks weird. Dracula looks like an evil little gremlin. Why? It is, basically, Dracula in this movie is sort of like a man bat is the best way I would describe it. A man bat. <laughs> Because like it's at one okay, so there's maybe like one joke like in the movie, not one joke, but like the character kind of because at some point he starts to fly, because um, of course it has wings. Yeah. And then like one of the characters says, "Oh, he can fly now." That was probably the only time that they made an attempt at sort of like poking fun at the crazy nature or, or like this unrealistic nature of the character. Because ultimately, when you see toward the end of the movie the character in its full form. He's got like wings. He doesn't, he has sort of a humanistic face, but not really. Mm -hmm. And then by the end of the movie, you see him kind of walking in like in London on the streets of London, spoiler alert, in the streets of London, because he does get to London. <laughs> the ship crashes, but Dracula does get to London. Mm -hmm. And they definitely set up a sequel. Um, and Corey Hawkins' character is sort of like the, the character who's going to be hunting Dracula down. So if they were to do a sequel, it would probably be based in London in the Victorian era. So it's, it's still it's got like enough features that you could probably like put a coat on it and it will like you got hands and feet and enough of the facial features that you could pass off as human in a silhouette but definitely when you see the character without any clothes or anything on on the boat it is terrorizing the characters toward the end of the movie it's a man bat that's the best way i can describe it to you it's a man bat yeah and probably more bat than man but like definitely like man bat would be like one you know Based off of the novel, he nobody ever really comes in contact with Dracula until Dracula contacts the guy who's writing the novel. So like the whole so I don't well, really remember what they said about what he looked like. I don't because it's more the idea. It's a psychological scare of Dracula. Oh. He's murdering these people. He's draining this woman of blood we don't know what's happening to her but the whole time yeah. this novel is being written by a man who was like then commissioned essentially by dracula like to tell his story right. and the so thing they is, hint some of those elements mean? are in some of those elements are in this movie they definitely have the women who he's been feeding on that character is in there okay um, she doesn't survive till the end of the movie. Um, you know, basically by the end of the she doesn't. film, she doesn't survive until the end of the book. No, uh, she, she dies like halfway through. Well, she dies like pretty sure. most of the way through this movie. She she survives till like the third act, but then she dies. Um, or as but far she's as I can on the she boat. Dies. She's on the boat. She's she's like they actually find her first. Then they do some like blood transfusion to help her like heal up. 
But then eventually she's like, oh, I can sense the presence of, of, of this creature and the creature can sense my presence. So they're sort of like connected because he, she's, he's yeah, been feeding yeah, on her yeah. this whole time. So they definitely, I think that they got some of those elements in there, but I, I do think they took some creative liberties based on what you're talking about okay. in terms of what the original novel was versus what this movie was. Because I think they probably did some of that to kind of give themselves a little more creative freedom in potential sequels. Yeah. Um, but like by the end of the movie, the only character who encountered the, the the creature to survive is Corey Hawkins' character. Okay. And everybody else on the ship is gone. There's this, like, the one particular part of this movie where I was like, oh, no, they're going to go there. It's that kind of a movie. Is when there's the, there's a young boy who's uh, the grandson of the captain gets, uh, you know, fed on by, by, by Dracula. And then eventually, uh, apparently, once you get fed on, then your blood becomes uh sensitive to the sunlight so if you stand in the sun your body catches on fire and so there's some gruesome moments where like literal like people catch on fire in the movie including the boy and so it, it's definitely a rated r movie in that sense yeah. and it was like for me it was that was that alien 2 moment where um you know like watching the second alien i'm like don't kill the girl don't you dare kill the girl and like you know the, the little girl survives till yeah. the end and there's this like big payoff where like um uh, what's her Sigourney Weaver's character? Why am I forgetting her na- character's name? She kills like the alien who's coming after the girl. Like in this movie, this is not one of those movies. The, the boy does get bit, and then the boy does, you know, uh, eventually uh, die off like the other characters. So the movie definitely gets dark. But like ultimately, I think they did a pretty good job with telling a Dracula story that's very different than most of the Dracula mm-hmm. movies, especially in a year when you got Renfield. Renfield is a very different kind of Dracula movie. Yeah. Um, if you prefer your Dracula... So commercialized. The old school mythological way, then you'd probably want to go see The Last Words of the Demeter. I certainly hope it has a second life on streaming. Like, these kind of movies sometimes... Yeah, be better I would hope so, too. It's just so ill-timed. Like, yeah. Plus, it, historical, yeah. historical horrors like this don't always... Well, it, it is yeah it's also one of those this is the kind of movie that like would have enjoyed a, a much more success if it had a viral marketing campaign yeah. like smile did when when they just like sent all those people like paid them to sit behind home plate of baseball games and with like the creepy smile on their face so you're watching the game you're like Who, what what is going on here so you just go research like, yeah so, uh, yeah um it's it's unfortunate though i think you're right it, it did definitely fall victim to the strikes and then how it puts the studios in a really awkward position. How do you promote this movie ultimately? And, and it's, it was a movie that was probably going to struggle regardless, but mm-hmm. the, the, that, the death knell was the fact that without, with the strike, there really wasn't much they could do to promote this film. 